Hello! Welcome to my next tutorial. So we are working on month nine of the Queen of Diamonds pattern. If you haven't heard of this before, it is a English paper piecing pattern that was put out by Pink Door Fabrics, Tula Pink Paper Pieces, and Free Spirit Fabrics did the block of, block of the month. You can still buy the pattern and all the template pieces and stuff. The pattern itself does not actually include the shapes. You have to buy the shapes uh, from paper pieces in order to get those. Very cool pattern, very fun. It's been a lot of fun. We're on month nine, so it's been a, a pretty fun nine months doing this. And we only have a couple more months to go, which is awesome. So I am going to be basting. I do glue basting month nine one so i am going to show you how i do that i always use a light board when i baste and i think it works really well you can see through the fabrics you don't need those acrylic templates which i think is just an added cost in the long run so i do not use them at all i just use my light board which is reusable for any quilt that i do whereas the acrylic templates you may not reuse because the shapes may not work again so that's why i prefer that so for this particular block, we need pieces letter J, letter F, and letter C. So those are the three that I pulled out. And I will start with J. So for J, it looks like I need 12 total. So I will take out 12 pieces. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So six are going to be for one thing. One, two three for another and then one two three so those are my j pieces press back. so i will start with those and then we'll take out the other pieces once we get to that so let me just tuck these over here so the first j is going to be our tent stripe so that's going to be these ones here and it looks like the way that they did them is this middle part here is right on that pink and brown line so that's what we're going to try to mimic so we'll go ahead and turn on our light board and i'll show you how we're going to get started so. We are going to start here. You can see that you can see right through the fabric there. And this should be fairly straightforward. So I guess there's not really a lot of thought to this because I was trying to think about it. Um, <clears throat> as long as you have, be, because they go either direction, as long as you have the brown and the pink on one side of this middle line, whether you, I don't know, I don't know how to describe that. So like even if I did, I guess this way, like if I skipped over one and the pink is here and the brown is here, I guess if you can see that, it doesn't really matter because I can just turn this whole piece around and then they would be the same. Because you want them to all be the same so that you can have it flow in a circle, I guess, if that makes sense. So, these are pretty straightforward, so we're going to go ahead and glue them down and cut them out. i got to find my glue. So, what I do is I actually glue straight to my fabric so it does not shift at all. So, we will make sure we leave enough room for a seam allowance. I hand cut my seam allowances and then go ahead and glue them all down and cut them out and we'll do a little fast forward for you let's see actually can i get three that'd be amazing i don't think i can get three with enough seam allowance no so i'm only going to be able to get two so there's going to be a little bit of fabric waste here but that's okay they give you plenty so we'll get two and I need six total. So I'll go ahead and do that. So 
So I have everything glued down so I can turn off my light board and I will next be cutting out my templates. I just use scissors to cut them out and leave about a 3 8 inch border around each one. And I also try to square off the sharp angles because that's where you're going to get the most bulk with your tags. So I'll just go around and cut each one out and then show how we baste them. So everything is uh, all cut out. So I will go ahead and remove this fabric. I did not end up using too much of it. So there's still quite a lot left, which is awesome. Always good to have extras. Oh, let's see. So we will go ahead and get this all back folded up so that we can put that away. Then the other piece of this is I am keeping all of my smaller scraps for a quarter inch hexi project that I'm doing. So I keep everything that is small enough for a quarter inch hexi, but I do not keep like my teeny tinies. Those I just throw away. So those will go in the trash. And then these will be kept for my other projects. So we'll just set those aside. Next up is a glue basting these. And with my diamonds, I like to glue base them facing the same direction. So what that would mean is instead of going one here, then one here, and like doing opposite sides so that my ends, my tails would face opposite directions, I glue based one side, so I glue base this one, this one, and then this one, this one, and my tails go in the same direction. Now, whether that will make sense on this particular project, I have to think about for a second. I may actually just do my other diamonds before I glue base because you can see I have the star. So the star itself will be fine. I will have my tails go all like they'll go this way and they'll all nest and make a nice little swirl in the middle. But I'm a little worried. Actually, no, I think that should work. So if my tails were here, my tails are here. If these tails are both going down, then they will nest. No, because this will be. Yeah, see, they can't both go down. Or they'd have to both go, I guess I could do it this way, into the middle and into here. This is a thought process, guys. <laughs> this is a thought process. This is why I leave all this in. So if my tails are facing the same direction, I can't have them go in like this. Because there will be a tail here that comes out and they will conflict with each other. But I can have the two tails go down because this is going to go in the middle of a triangle. That's not going to affect. And then the other tail will go into the sashing and that's not going to affect. So I can still do my tails the way I like to do them, where they're facing the same direction. Now, the other thing I have to think about is making sure, because I, I want the chocolate on one side and the pink on the other, that my tails are facing the same on all my diamonds. So what I wanna do is stack my diamonds so that they are all basically where you can see the pink and the chocolate so I'm going to stack them all so the chocolate is going down so that when I pull them to do the tails the tails will all go the same way so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them off my stack 
and I'm going to do the bottom right, then top right, and then the other side. And that will make all my tails go the same exact way. So I'll show one real quick and then we'll do our fast motion so you don't have to see everything. So bottom right is going to be the same side I start with all of my diamonds so that all the tails are going the same way so that I can get the stripes all going the same way. So tail theory is definitely a part of this particular quilt because you want to make sure everything nests and that tails don't interfere with each other. So definitely something to pause and think about for a second before you start basting. So and you want to get a nice you know a good baste on these but you don't want to be super tight you don't want to be loose there's it's a fine line because you want to be able to get the threads in between you know you have to leave room for your thread to get in but you only need one or two threads to do that so i usually use my finger to kind of roll it over the edge and then just make sure it's a nice crisp that there's no extra bulk at the tips or anything that looks really good actually and so that was our first one so again i'll pull the next one and start at the bottom and go all the way around and we'll do our fast video for you Okay, so these are all set. You can see all of my stripes line up. You can see that easy when I do it this way. So the pink is on the bottom, brown on the top, and then all of my tags go the same way. So when I go to do these, like I said, the tails will go out, and then all of my colors will rotate the same way because it does kind of throw the eye off if you go the other direction a little bit. So you want them all rotating the same way. So you just want to be conscious of that when you are basting these, if that makes sense. So that's kind of how they will go. And we will start on the middle ones. Next on the list of diamonds, so we need three of these, is going to be these dots. So these dots were used previously in a block. So I have a piece, this is a piece I got with this set i'm not going to use that at all i'm going to use the piece that came with the previous block so that i can save on some fabric hopefully and i like to just use my fingers i kind of take the creases out you don't really have to these will disappear with ironing or whatever once you are done your block but I just like to take them out a little bit. So let's see what we can do here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on our light box. Okay, so that should be the highest setting. With these dots, they don't really have to be fussy cut, but I have been doing it anyways, to be honest. So I've been trying to make sure I have a straight line of dots that go down the center of my diamond. That's the way I've been doing it. So I think I will do the same, just trying to figure out how, so I can't get two that way. So I think I can get, two, I don't think I can get three. So I'll probably do it like this, I guess. 
and then leave this extra on the side for another block. So that's kind of the way we're going to do it. So the way I make sure I am on the right line, I need something. Straight line of some sort so that I know. So if I want this to start here, I think this was the dot I was on. Here, I think it was this one. So I want to start here, then this is going to be my straight line. So what I will do is again, I put some glue on the back of my templates and we'll start this dot here and then make sure, so I'll center it between the dots. Can't quite have it on both. And then that'll give me my straight line of dots. So I'll just keep going here. And when I don't use my straight line, I have found that I've been off by one row and then it throws off the look. Like I said, you don't necessarily have to do these this way. You can just, I think it was the next row actually that I want. So I'll still use my straight line. Uh, do them any which way, which probably would be easier, but this works for me. I'm a little finicky about these types of things. So, and then we'll do our last one. And since this is fairly quick, I'll just go ahead and do this without the fast forward. So again, just going to put it even between the two dots. And that'll work. So the next step will be to go ahead and cut them out with my scissors. So I will fast forward that part and come back to you with how we'll glue baste it. Next step will be basting these. So again, I'm going to have my tails go in the same direction. There's really no rhyme or reason to which side to start first on these because these are uniform both ways. So you just wanna make sure that you are basting one side, then the other, and this will work out. So we'll keep going with the basting. So these ones are all set. So the last set that we need to do is our hippos. And these are gonna be pretty precise because you have three pieces with three little scenes that have to go a certain way. So like this one's gonna be vertical, this is more sideways. So we wanna bear that in mind while we are placing these. So I think the easiest way to try to figure this out is going to be You know, I don't know, actually. I was thinking, because I want to make sure my tails go the right way. I mean, there's a lot to think about. So you have these three pieces. All the tails are going to go like this. And then we got the three hippos. Actually, this will be more like, like that. So we're going to have to bear all this in mind while we are doing this. So I guess I will open up the hippo fabric and see where we go from there. And remember, this is gonna be in reverse too. So I will try to bear that in mind, but my two bottom ones might end up getting flipped, we'll see. But we're gonna open up the fabric and see what we do. 
So this hippo fabric is a pretty big piece. Oops. Okay. So they give you plenty of room to get these pieces out, which is awesome. So let me move these off for a second. So let's start in here. So we'll start on this end. So these are basically the three hippos we need. I might even be able to just take them from there. That would be pretty freaking convenient. So this is gonna be the first one. So that's easy. We'll definitely glue that one down. That's gonna be our more vertical one. So I want the bird, and I hope you can see that in the video. I'll try to zoom in a little for you, but this is the convenience of the light box, is that you can really see right through that fabric and your diamond, so you can really center it all and get that nice and good there. So that's gonna be, make sure that's nice and pressed down. Then our other diamonds are going to be where they're gonna be like this. So this is gonna be the top part. So we want this hippo and bird in here. And then the butterfly and hippo. This might work out perfectly actually. Because the butterfly. All right, so butterfly. It's actually more like, nope. Oh, it like does. Okay, so this is how the butterfly was. Oh, that's too close. Okay, so that's not gonna work. And how is this bird? This bird was this. So I'm trying to match it to the book as best I can. This is, again, I don't, I try not to edit this too much while, especially while I'm doing this part, because I want you guys to see how I do it, that this is not always just a quick wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, we're done. There's some thought process that goes to this. So the bird has this angle going away from them, and it looks like the hippo, is pretty much centered. So I think this is gonna be correct for the bird. And then the butterfly, I think we'll have to find a different one. Maybe this one down here, that should work. So the butterfly is up in the corner like this. So let me put my glue down. So I think this should work. Let's hope, because I'm going to cut them out before I know if it's going to work. This is sturdy right there. So we are going to go ahead and cut them out with my scissors. I will zoom out a little bit while I do that. I'll move this back. And see where this takes us. And I'll do the fast forward on the cutout. But again, cut out just about a 3 8 inch seam allowance. If it's a little bigger, it's fine. If a little smaller, it's fine. As long as you have plenty of room to stitch, that's all that matters. It doesn't have to be super even, so just eyeball it. It'll work. Oop, sorry, hit my camera. So I will go ahead and cut that out, do a fast forward for you.
So this next part is where a little tail theory, as I like to call it, comes into play. So we are going to set up these diamonds the way that they're going to be in the block. So all my tails are spinning right now. So this guy, I'm gonna go up here. Then Mr. Birdie will end up here. And Butterfly will end up here. So I did, I think I did good fussy cutting. So the way I want my tails to spin is going in this direction. So that means if I want, this will have to be the side that I glue last if I wanted to go this way. So that means I start with gluing this side. So that's a little different than we've been doing, but that's fine because we're trying to make sure that this is all gonna go the right way. So we're gonna start with this side, opposite side. So I'm just gonna do that for each one. So again, my tails have to go this way on this one. So that means I want this side to be the side I glue last. So this guy's side will glue first. And then same thing, this side goes last, this side goes first. So we'll just go ahead and do that. So I think I got all my tails right so you can see, let me zoom in a little so you can see that center. So where my tails are, so this top one here, then we got a dot, then we have this one, then we have another dot. So right now they're all spinning, so well, the last one, the last one is right. So they will all spin in this circle. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. So perfect. I'll zoom out. So that's what that looks like. And then the stripes, like I said, so I put the tails going the same way. I couldn't have done that if I was going to have to put them in because these two tails would conflict. But I can put the tails facing out because this triangle is actually going to end up in the middle of the triangle. So it's not going to interfere with any tails for that triangle. So these will nest in just like this. All the stripes going the same way because all my tails go the same way. And that will be the center part. So next we will go ahead and baste the top and bottom. So we're going to do these. They're the same on the top and bottom and see where we go from there. So next up is gonna be piece F. We're gonna need six of these. And these are just gonna go on a solid color. So these will be pretty straightforward. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So six of those total. Then I just take my solid fabric, which is right here. That's easy. And let's see. So we'll take this. So you get plenty, 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 plenty of this fabric, which is awesome. So what I do is I fold it over and I'm going to glue down three of these. I just want to make sure I have enough, which I do, and I should be able to get three across. And we'll cut it on the double layer and then go ahead and yeah, cut them out and then glue the other three. So I will do all of that in fast motion for you so you can see how that works.
Okay, so these are all glued down. So next up, we'll be basting them. Same thing, I will just baste them with the tails going the same direction. That's how I prefer my diamonds, if possible. So I will go ahead and take care of that. So these are all set. So next up will be my triangles. Last one, that is letter C. And we need six of these as well. So I will go ahead and pull these out. So some of these have been used. I'm trying not to reuse the used one, although it's perfectly fine to, but I wanna use up all my new ones first. Oh. I can find my new ones. Nope, oh, they're there. They were stuck in the middle. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, and six. So the way the pattern has these six triangles is with a dot centered on them. So that should be fairly straightforward. And the nice thing about that is that it is going to be easy to not worry about my tails because the, the dot will be centered so the tails can turn any which way, which is good. So all we're going to do is literally center these dots. So probably can start down here. And I think I'll have to go every other one because if you can see that, I won't get enough seam allowance there to do two right next to each other like that. So we'll do those two. And I think also I can't do that. Yeah, so this is going to use a little bit of space to get all of these in, which is totally fine. They give you, again, plenty of fabric. But it is looking like I'm going to have to use three rows. So it's going to be like this, because I don't think I can get any closer together than that. So I will glue those down, cut them out, and keep going forward. So I figured out a better way to not use so much space as I turned my triangles upside down. Didn't really think of that when I was first doing it. So that worked out perfectly and then just used these two up here. So that used up less space on the dots. So next we will go ahead and cut these out and then base them. And then I'll quickly show you how the tails will go when you're putting these together.
So there's not a lot to be said for the tails on a triangle, but I just wanted to show you do, when you have multiples, you do just want to make sure that you go around the triangle in the same direction so that your top tail goes the same way. So if you consider the bottom where the two tails go down, this tail can go either left or right. So it's just easier if you keep them all the same so that it's consistent. So I normally start on the right and then go counterclockwise. If you want to go clockwise, just make sure you do that the same for all of them. It doesn't really matter which way that tail goes usually, but you just want to make sure it always goes the same way, if that makes sense. So we'll do this last one and then show you how this fits with those diamonds. So these are going to form a large triangle. So again, you just want your tails to all rotate around. So we'll put all our tails into the sashing. That is not going to bother anything. So that's the easiest way to do that. So the double tails will point out, the single tail will point in, and it will all rotate around and make a nice little package here so this one goes up and then under so just like that it's not perfect because obviously they're not sewn down but you get that nice little rotation and let's see if i can flip this over without disturbing ah, of course ah, of course but you can see on the back these form a nice little little rosette there that's what you're going to get on the back so I'll zoom in a little on that okay so obviously they're not stitched down but that's what those tails are going to form so that's perfect so we have all of these pieces now basted cut basted everything so I am going to go ahead and put them in a baggie so that they can get stitched together I hope you enjoyed watching this video on how to baste block 9-1 of the Queen of Diamonds block of the month. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments if there's any other tutorials that you would like to see, whether it's for this block of the month or some other technique in English paper PC, please just let me know. Make sure you do subscribe to my channel only because I don't post videos very often, so, or not consistently anyways, so you will get alerted by YouTube when I post if you do subscribe to the channel. And hopefully this was helpful for you, and thanks everybody. Bye!